Hey guys, this had a night paladin. Um, rather this Veron from Speaker of the Stars. I'm sorry, I'm still trying to break out of my old intro. Um, it's a bit of a habit, so I need to practice a bit more. But either way, we are doing a traditional piece this time, this video. Um, and this is actually video number two for the Flores series, which I started last month. Uh, if you don't know what this is, is the concept was that I wanted to draw the flower that is associated with the month every month. So, if you're familiar with things like birthstones or birth gems, jewels, whatever, uh, it's basically the same concept, but um, it's like the birth flowers. Unfortunately, uh, I forgot that I wanted to do this entire thing, and I started pretty late. I started doing this February 28th because I did forget. Like, So I ended up doing the one for January on February 28th, and I'm doing the one for February now. And the next video should be March. It should be March. Like, I have to make myself do it. So if you haven't watched the one for January, which is the carnation, it's in the description. It's also probably in the end card. Or just check the playlist this is in and yeah. So for this one, we're doing February's flower, which is the violet. And the violet supposedly, well, February has two flowers associated with it. It is the violet and the iris. So supposedly, these flowers, these two flowers more or less represent faithfulness, wisdom, and hope. Violets specifically um, connote innocence. Iris supposedly says royalty. Unfortunately, I was probably really tired and not really paying attention when I was drawing this. I encircled the iris for royalty, but I ended up writing and drawing violets. But I guess it's fine. Uh, I guess because I was going for both the royalty and the wisdom aspect. So the way that the character is drawn sort of gives, gives up that royal wisdom -y effect vibe so i guess it still sort of works out um also like violet the color violet and purple and even blue for that matter um usually connotes royalty and nobility in color theory because in the past when you know uh, artificial dyes weren't a thing yet blue and violet are very difficult to come across with mainly because they're not very common colors in nature like sure you have flowers that are, that are violet but um they're not as easy to get as a red or yellow or orange. So blues and purples and violets are very noble royalty rich people colors. So anyway, um, I wanted to go with both the royalty vibe actually but also with the wisdomy vibe. And I wanted to make the character look like she was expecting you, like um, she's beckoning you to come closer, like, I've been expecting you, my pupil, or something like that. But I didn't want the piece to look too heavy, like what I did with Carnation. Because with Carnation, I wanted to go with the theme of distinction, so I really relied on bright and heavy contrast in the piece. So there's a lot of black and with a lot of gold, so it is meant to be like that. With, with Violet, um, I wanted to go with a more luxurious but also um light piece i guess i'm not really sure how to describe it like, i wanted the piece to look like there's an ample amount of sunlight filtering down from somewhere it makes a piece look bright but also pretty luxurious like it's a slightly magical moment of sorts um so because the theme in my head when i joined this was royalty and i wanted it to be slightly luxurious I drew for the her background like a really sort of private pool with glass windows and like there's a waterfall in one corner and I'm not sure but I feel like something is slightly missing in the piece like I wanted to put a bit more I guess contrast or a slightly more heavier background but I was afraid that it will make it too heavy and I guess I left it as is because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do to make it look more contrasted, I think. Another thing is that um, 
the bricks in the background are probably wrong. I, I, I think the perspective is wrong. But um, I guess I learn as I go along, I think. Also, I didn't draw as much flowers as I did with carnation. Uh, mainly because I think I wanted to focus a bit on the water. But I guess it still gives up the point. Like, there's violets in the background, around her, and in her hair. And I guess that's fine. <laughs> so we're using the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. And I'm actually starting to enjoy them a bit more now. Um, when I first got these colored pencils, I do love them. I really did love them, but I figured out they still love watercolors my main medium. And I think I still do. Like, they're still probably my main medium. But I'm starting to enjoy and appreciate the colored pencils a lot more now. Um, especially with this, with the Flora series, for some reason, I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of them. Like, I could do better shadows, I know how to lay down color evenly without making it look like too saturated or too colored. Like, that was the first issue that I had with the colored pencils is that because it does have a skin tone, which I used to have me using earlier for the skin, but it's a very dark and heavy skin tone, so I wasn't really sure how to go about it, but I don't know, I guess watching YouTube videos and stuff, it started to rub off on me that I can use different tones and shades to create a skin color, to create like the shadows and stuff like that. So, I'm not an expert, obviously, but I think I'm starting to get somewhere in my progress with using them. The thing though with colored pencils is that because it takes a lot of layers and blending and layering and blending to get something done, uh, a piece like this, if I did this in watercolor, will probably, I'll probably finish it in an hour or two if I put in a lot of layers and effort and details. This one, colored pencils, probably took me, it took me a while to finish. I think four, five, maybe even six hours. The thing is, I finished this piece and I already recorded it. I already did like the close-up view and thing. Um, and then I left it overnight. And then I came back the next morning. I saw that it felt like it was missing some shadows, like some contrasting, some depth. So I actually did go in again in the morning. Which is funny because like... I was supposed to go to work, I was preparing to go to work, and I saw it, and then I spent like something like 30 minutes or maybe even an hour just touching it up. I did, I wasn't late to work, don't worry, um, but I was supposed to come in a little bit earlier ideally. If I didn't draw, I would have probably come in a bit earlier, but yeah, I kind of ended up drawing instead. <laughs> All for the sake of art. It's slightly funny because um, I wanted to go with a slightly darker color scheme for the girl, I guess. I was thinking of like maybe using a black again, but I don't know, like, because the violets are a cooler, darker color, I felt like I wanted to go with blonde instead, <laughs> which I've been trying to avoid because I have a lot of blonde character drawings a lot recently, and I wanted to do other colors, but I guess I ended up with this. And then the pink was also just because of the blonde. I wanted to find something that would complement the blonde and the violet around her. But I didn't want it to be blue because there's gonna be a lot of blue in the background later. So I guess pink happened. <laughs> and her eyes, I think, are green. I'm not 100% sure. I think they're blue or green. Which is funny because Violet Evergarden. <laughs> I should have just drawn Violet Evergarden, but I, f I didn't think of her when I was drawing this. But, yeah. If you haven't watched it, it's a really good show. It's, um, it's nice. I've cried, almost cried, actually, because I watch them usually on the way to work. It takes two hours to go to work for me, 
and I like this bus, it's really comfy and you have your own seats and stuff, you don't need to stand, it's not camp. So it's an R. So like I'd watch Violet Evergarden on Netflix on my phone um, going to work. And like there were times that I really felt like if I wasn't outside, I would have just started bawling my eyes, eyes out. It's really a great show, like it hits you right in the feelings, like Kyo, Annie, please. <laughs> So I did actually work on a, on this a lot more as I mentioned earlier after recording. So stay till the end to actually see the refined version. But we are nearing the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, please like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more uh, art and maybe like fan art, character designing, digital traditional art. Um, I do that a lot on my channel. And follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Event Art if you want to see more. And I'll see you around.